Danny Green became known as Cleveland's Celtic warrior in the 1970s when he waged war on the Italians known as the Mayfield Road Mob. One by one, Danny destroyed every mafia hitman that came after him. In his quest for power, he went from union president to FBI informant to leader of the Celtic Club, Cleveland's Irish Mob. When he was finally killed by a car bomb in 1977, the trial of Danny's assassins brought Cleveland's La Cosa Nostra to his knees. In death, Danny succeeded in his life's work. He brought down the mob. Nobody wants to come after me, huh? take over the rackets, labor racketeering, gambling, uh, vending machines. He worked under the uh, auspices of the FBI. He got away with a lot of things, including murder, because the FBI protected him. The house was blown up and he got out and dusted himself off and walked away. Uh, he had nine lines. Headlines about the bombing war popped up around the country. Mobsters from coast to coast began to view the Cleveland Mafia as a penny ante operation unable to control its own turf. Green and Nardi's attacks on the three mafiosi were an embarrassment. Licavoli delivered clear orders to his men to blow the pair to kingdom come. In 1977, Danny Green and the Cleveland Mafia were locked in a vicious battle for control of the city's criminal underworld. And it looked as if the Irish gangster just might succeed in taking down the mob. He and his new partner, John Nardi, had set off a bombing war that rocked the city. So far, their partnership was succeeding in picking off the city's mob leaders one by one. But Green knew his adversary. A counter-strike was coming. To confuse his enemies, Green varied his movements. He routinely swapped cars, and he always checked his ride for bombs before getting in. Wherever Green went, he carried a 38 and kept a backup piece in a gym bag. But the mob was patient. They had a strategy that Nardi and Green wouldn't see coming. May 17, 1977. John Nardi left his office and headed into the parking lot. He walked between his car and another and reached to open his door. The explosion hurtled Nardi through his open door and slammed him against the opposite window. When Nardi was pulled from the wreckage, he whispered, it didn't hurt, then he died. They found shrapnel from that bomb on the tops of four-story buildings. Whoever uh, set that bomb off wanted to make sure that Nardi was good and dead. The mob's clever new strategy worked. The killers hadn't placed the bomb on Nardi's car where he was sure to look. They had put it on a specially rigged car parked next to Nardi's. Sergeant Kovacic told Green that he'd better lay low, or he'd be the next one killed. To take out Green, the Cleveland mob enlisted a well-respected out-of-towner named Ray Ferrito. Ferrito was a nervous man with an ulcer who chewed antacids by the handful, but he was drawn to the job by the promise of becoming a made man. Ferrito was teamed up with two lower-level mobsters, Pucci Sisternino, and Ronnie Carabia. They staked out Danny for a long, long time, 
waiting for him to drop his guard, waiting for the opportunity to send him to Kingdom Come. The mobsters finally scored a break when they managed to bug the phone of Green's girlfriend. Just. Now the hit squad knew the doctor's name and when Green would be at the office. October 6, 1977. Carabia and Ferrito staked out the Brainerd Place Medical Center. At 3.20 p.m., they saw Danny Green arrive and park his car. Ferrito pulled a car loaded with explosives into the space right next to Green's. He then got into a getaway vehicle where his partner, Carabia, was holding a detonator, a controller for model airplanes rigged to trigger the bomb. A short time later, Green emerged from the building and walked to his car. Green had been killed instantly. His body landed face up under the bumper of the bomb car. The force of the blast tore open his back. His left arm was lying almost a hundred feet away, an emerald ring still on his finger. But even as investigators catalog pieces of the infamous mobster, Danny Green's unique brand of Irish luck seemed to produce one more twist. As Carabia and Ferrito pulled away from the bomb scene, they were spotted by a woman who just happened to be an artist. She drew a sketch of one of the men and brought it to police. Ed Kavasik recognized it instantly. Who is that? I said, that's Ray Ferrito. A few days later, the cops picked him up in Pittsburgh. Under questioning, it didn't take long for him to flip. In exchange for protection, Ferrito confessed. In doing so, he gave up mob boss Jack Licavoli, Carabia, Sister Nino, and other top members of the Cleveland mob.